How's everybody doing today? All right. Um, so my name's Eric Tabanek. Uh, we're going to talk about building command line tools in Python. Um, if this works, I'll control from my phone. If not, I'll do it from the, from the computer. But uh, yeah, so if anybody was here for the last talk, uh, there were some really excellent sort of standards about reusing, reusing code and whatnot. I'm going to try and carry some of those themes forward, although not in quite as much detail. Um, so I work at a, uh, a company called Game Changer. Uh, we build a, a sports scoring app for amateur baseball, softball, and basketball. Um, and so I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about one of my colleagues. So this is, uh, this is my good friend, Sean. Sean's a product marketer on our, on our admin team. He, uh, essentially works with all the coaches that, that use our product. Uh, he sends a lot of, a lot of emails uh, trying to get them to come and come back the next season around, score more games, things like that. And so Sean will often send a bunch of emails. Um, and so uh, a lot of times he wants to test things out. So maybe he's sending a headline, maybe he's using a different color, I don't know. He, He's going to send two different emails and try and figure out which one, you know, gets people to interact more. So Sean will ping me on Slack and say, like, hey, I sent out these two emails. Uh, one of them I sent, like, 360-some emails and 43 people clicked through. And the other one was 323 and 52 people clicked through. So uh, which one performed better? Uh, well, it's pretty obvious that the second one performed better. We got more clicks with less sends. Um, but is that statistically relevant, like can we, should we say that we should always send this, whatnot. Uh, so um, I have a stats background, there's a, a number of different ways to solve this. Uh, my personal favorite is using uh, Bayesian statistics. Um, so yep, we're, we're not going to actually get into the Bayesian statistics in this talk. This is worthy of probably a whole hour long talk on its own. Um, but. Uh, very pro base, so I start poking around the internet trying to figure out uh, what's the best way to to evaluate this, uh, find some code. Um, so I found this really awesome snippet of code online. Um, I've tried to give as much credit to the guy who actually wrote this as, as possible. Um, and he, he actually wrote this really great blog post about how to run A-B tests uh, using Bayesian methods. And at the end, here's some code to run it. Um, so I'm like, sweet, that's what I need. Uh, all those formulas and whatnot look right. I'm going to trust you uh, and, and go with it. So I take his code, and I copy and paste it, and I throw in the numbers that I need, and I, uh, I adjust the alpha and beta levels because I don't really have any priors that I want to put in there. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry about it. Um, and so I run this, and sure enough, it tells me that the probability that the A group was better than the B group, uh, the one that we thought didn't work as well, was only uh, 5%. So pretty solid evidence that B is better than A. So yeah, all right, <laughs> good job. Let's all go have a beer. Um, Unfortunately, I have another 15 minutes or so to talk, and I think if we were all to go have a beer now, you, you guys might not get so much out of it. We're supposed to be talking about command line utilities anyway, so not quite so fast. Sean's back, and he's, he's done more. Uh, he sent a lot more emails this time to the B group because it did better, and he wants to know, like, is it still doing better? Uh, so I go, and I... Uh, open up this file that I, that I saved somewhere on my hard drive and um, go and, you know, put in these new numbers. Uh, I probably should have updated my alpha and beta in this case because I did have some prior information, but whatever. Um, and I printed it out, and this time A did a whole bunch better, like a lot better. And Sean's like, all right, that's, that's, that's cool. Uh, like, did it do 10% better? And so I go back to that blog post, and, and I find that, like, oh, hey, yeah, there actually is a way to, to measure, like, how much better it did, uh, or, or at least give a probability. So we say, hey, uh, yeah, it's actually really strong it's that it was at least 5% better. And so Sean comes back to me, well, what about 10%? Um, 
So I go back to this file and update it, and, and now I've got a couple files floating around with basically the same little code. The last line's different. We're breaking one of the sort of fundamental pieces of whenever we wrote, write code. If you're here for the last talk, this came up. Uh, don't repeat yourself. Don't repeat yourself. Don't repeat yourself. Um, so, I, uh, you know, someone else takes a look at this or says like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, well, maybe I should make this a little bit better. So, I go and update this and like, and create some functions that actually make this easier to use. And so now, I've got some nice functions that encapsulate everything. And if I want to run this again for different uh, levels, so I can test 5%, I can test 10%, I can test 20%. And like, hey, look, Sean, right as you get past 10%, it, the probability drops off quite a bit. So it's probably about that much better. Um, so this, this is pretty cool. Um, this is in a pretty good state. And you know what? I'm like, hey, these are some like functions that other people might want to use. That blog post was nice. But you know what? Just like with that blog post, sharing is caring. Um, and so uh, I, I want other people to be able to use this technique because uh, I got one shout earlier, but you know, Bayes is an awesome, Bayesian theory is a, is a great way of doing this. The blog post talks way more about this, but it's a way better way of trying to understand these types of things. So I'm like, hey, let's make a package out of this. Um, so uh, this is Python. That's actually uh, pretty easy to do. We're just gonna release those, those functions. So we write a, a setup.py. Um, this is another thing that could you know, go on for, it, for its own talk about how to release stuff on pip and whatnot. I'm sure there's some great talks out there. Uh, so I'm not gonna get into all of the, the dirty details here, but essentially we can do this and we can uh, build it and we can upload it and now someone can go and, and pip install it. So. Um, some, someone else comes and says like, hey, uh, I, I want to use that thing you built. I'm like, all right, great. So you can, you know, create a virtual environment. You can go and uh, install it with, with pip. And uh, then you just got to open up your Python interpreter and you need to import the right function. Um, if you're not sure exactly how to use that function, you may need to go to GitHub to, you know, look at a readme or uh, look at the source code, um, and now you have to put in like all of these numbers um, that you know aren't very clearly labeled, and you'll you'll get out a, a probability. So um, unless you have intimately you know read this code, granted it, it's not super long. Um, this is not super intuitive or super usable. Um, there's there's like a lot going on here, and so um, for the like the newcomer to this, to this piece of code um, that's really designed to do like two pretty basic things and they're very similar. Um, there's a, a lot of context that needed. There's a, sort of, you know, a heavy burden to the user to, to get this to work. Um, so what, what we'd prefer is to uh, have a command line tool where we, can, where we can run it and it will spit out something and says like, hey, Here's how you use this. Uh, you can you can run this A/B test, and you can tell it uh, what's the population size, the success size, the second population size, its success size, and here's some other parameters that you can fiddle with if you'd like. Um, and so we can input those. It's a quick like hit the up char character and change one of the the um, one of the variables to to figure out you know what what things look like. Um, so this would be super handy. And so uh, this is Python. We can do what we want, and usually it's pretty easy. So let's, let's build this thing. Uh, that's what Python's great for. Uh, so if you search around about uh, command, command line utilities and taking command line input uh, for your script, uh, the first thing you're going to uh, come across is argparse. Argparse is part of the standard library. Quite powerful, but it's also quite uh, low level. Um, it can be uh, fairly cumbersome to use. Um, I, I would compare it somewhat to trying to make orange juice uh, by squeezing the orange on your eye. Uh, <laughs> if anybody remembers this, uh, you know, you mean there's a better way? 
Um, there is a better way, uh, and that better way is called uh, a doc opt. Um, doc opt was introduced to me by a coworker, and it's it's awesome. It's a descriptive language for creating command line interfaces. It was uh, written first for Python, but now actually exists for a whole bunch of other languages. Um, and so, with doc opt, we can essentially in the doc string uh, for our command line utility, uh, we can define uh, a command line interface. So here we only have one usage, it's, uh, and we can define the variables that are going to be dropped in. Uh, we can define optional variables, uh, which are here represented in the square brackets. Um, the doc op website obviously describes all of these rules and whatnot. Um, we have another one that uh, is a optional, but there, there's an or in there, so you can only do one or the other, and otherwise it will raise an error. Um, and we have a couple more optionals. When, uh, when we print like help, it actually gives us this full doc string so that we can actually see, we can give a more descriptive uh, description of, of what these uh, options and variables do. Uh, and the, the really nice thing is you just drop the doc string, um, which is available as dunder doc in your script, into the doc op function, and it returns to you a dictionary with all of these elements as keys and the values or the defaults that were passed in by the user uh, as the values. So that makes it super easy for you to use. Uh, before we actually get into how this is used, I wanted to show a few examples of more complicated ones because this one's pretty pretty basic. So here is uh, Dusty. Dusty was a tool, uh, is a tool that uh, was built by some of my coworkers for managing uh, your uh, a workspace environment uh, through Docker containers. Um, it's a great tool if you have a bunch of services and whatnot, uh, you, should check, you should check out Dusty. It's a great way to, to set that up and have that running locally. So the, here's like the main Dusty command line tool. When you run the Dusty command, here's all the different commands that it allows you to do. And so all of that's done through doc op. Um, here's one of the specific commands. So this is the bundles command within that, and then it has its own commands. Uh, so, so you can extend it to a whole bunch of subcommands. Uh, here's another quick little tool that I wrote. Um, so I will often find myself in the psql uh, like command line interface writing queries. Uh, and sometimes those queries can like take a while to run, and then all of a sudden I'm like, you know what, I really want this like table of data to be in uh, like a Google spreadsheet so I can send it to someone on marketing or, or finance or, or something like that. Uh, people who wouldn't really understand this output or what a query is or whatnot, whatnot and, and probably want to operate it on it somehow. And so I built, uh, to do this in Python is pretty simple. It's just some string replacement and clearing some white space and whatnot. It's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, but then to actually like use this regularly and be able to like copy from my terminal and then paste that in, um, command line utility is perfect for that. So this just, boom, pops it out. And so in order to write the spec for how that works, we can use a file if we want or it will, you know, we can um, pipe in and out of it. And so this is another just example of, uh, you know, really simple command line tool utility built in uh, with DocOp. So back to, back to our Bayesian probability uh, calculator. So the, if, if this is our interface, um, this is the implementation to essentially run that. So it's, it's uh, maybe 20 lines of code. It's, it's, not, um, it's not super crazy. Essentially, we just pull out all the variables that we, that we care about. Um, they're all coming in as strings, so we convert them to the appropriate numerical types. Um, we want to check if a uh, relative or absolute effect was passed in, and if so, call the right thing, and then print out the result, and, and that's, that's about it. Um, so if we do that, uh, now we have, uh, you know, a CLI. We can call Python in our CLI and throw in the variables. 
Um, I, I didn't put that doc string there at the top, but if you just called Python CLI, you'd get the doc string explaining how it works. So this is uh, a, a bit cleaner. Um, that's nice. So, so now let's go back to our, to our end user who's going to uh, download this uh, via pip. Um, it turns out that you can actually run this with the module flag, and maybe that's a bit easier. I'm, I was being a bit hyperbolic here, but um, trying to run that script when you download it with pip is actually kind of a pain. Like, it doesn't really live anywhere nice. I had to use grep to go and figure out, like, where within my, like, virtual environment this thing was actually stored. Um, and this is, this, is a, this is a mess. Like, this, this is actually maybe worse than having them throw open the interpreter and import the function and use it themselves. So this isn't very helpful. Um, this, is, this is definitely not something that, uh, you know, this is definitely not something like you're gonna like tell someone to do like, oh yeah, just run this thing and find the, the Python file in your virtual environment. So, all right, so, so that's, that's not gonna work. This uh, is the key to making it all happen. It's called an entry point. Um, so back in our setup.py file, we can define an entry point uh, for console script. And so by adding this one little line that says console, or well, four little lines that say console scripts, and then we give the tool a name, so this is a Bayesian A-B test, and it says that entry is now at CLI main, and so it's gonna call that function. So now, back out on our, on our command line, um, once we do, once we're in our virtual environment and install via pip, all of a sudden now we have this tool it's just called Bayesian A-B test, so we can call it and we can get the doc string, and we can call it with the inputs and, and get all the right things. So this now is super helpful. Um, we can either install it in a virtual environment and then go to that virtual environment when we want to use it, or we could just install it sort of on our whole system, and whenever we need to use it, we just type the, the line and put in the four numbers, and, and Sean has his answer real quickly. Uh, he, he, can, he can slack me and I can slack him right back. It'll be a matter of copy and paste. Um, so, uh, yeah, CLI tools are awesome. Um, they're awesome because they help make your code dry. They're awesome because they help make your code shareable. And they're particularly awesome because they turn your code into, from a script into a tool that's, that's easy for you and others to use. So, oh, that's all I got. Thank you for your time. Thanks for coming. I think I have a few few minutes for, for questions. Uh, yeah, there's some time for questions. If you're sitting at a desk, uh, please use the mic. You can turn it on with a silver button in front of the microphone and just be sure to turn it off when you're done. Otherwise, just be loud. It seems um, doc op, our, our process has a lot of granularity. Like you can control the types of your input variables and stuff and it seems that doc op, that kind of washes out with doc opt. Uh, yeah. I, I, believe so. Uh, there may be more advanced functionality in, in DocOp that does allow you to specify that, but it wasn't, at, it wasn't immediately obvious when I've, when I've used it. So yeah, I think it's a, um, a difference between using something that's very powerful but can be a bit more robust to write versus something that, you know, cleanly integrates your documentation to, to the interface. Anything else? Yeah. Making a Slack bot out of it? That's actually a really great idea. Yeah, making a Slack bot that's a Bayesian AP test. So then Sean doesn't even have to bug me at all. Uh, that, that's going to be my next hack day project. Thank you. <laughs> uh, any, any other questions? Well, thanks, guys. That was a lot of fun. <laughs>